Hi, I'm Liz Kian and this is the Indoor Garden. I'm really excited about our show today. We're going to take a look at some of our successes that we've had from some plants that you've seen in previous shows. A little instruction sure can go a long way. Now the first plant that I'm going to have you look at is from a show that we did several months ago and it's a snake plant. So let's take a look. I'm going to take, make cuttings actually from this one leaf here and I'm choosing a leaf where the tip has been broken since it's not going to grow anymore anyway. And what you want to do is cut a leaf at the very base, as close to the base of the pot as you can. And then kind of lay it out here and you want to make three to four inch sections out of the leaf that you cut. So I'll make a few of them here right now. This looks good. And then you take your sections and put them right into a pot of potting soil. And I'm using a clay pot today. I prefer to use a clay pot with plants that like to stay on the dry side because the clay pot itself dries out a lot faster. So you can use plastic if you want, that's fine. But I personally prefer the clay. So just stick those little sections in about a half an inch. And they'll all be sitting out. It looks kind of funny, but this is actually how they get started. And then, when you're all done, you can water it. Although there is one other thing I should tell you. If you're using the variety of, of snake plant that I'm using today, which is the Sansevieria laurenti, when the new snakes appear, they'll actually be all green. They won't have this yellow border. I don't know why they do that. I'm sure there's a logical botanical reason for it, but that's what they do. There's good news and bad news about the snake plant. The good news is that the cuttings are actually producing new leaves. The bad news is that it's been a very slow process. And here they are. As you can see, as I predicted, it does have some new leaves and they are all green. There's just a few of them here really coming up. It's been very, very slow, but it is happening. And I also mentioned that there must be some logical botanical reason why the cuttings, which have a yellow edge to them, if you recall, produce leaves that ha are all green. Well, I discovered what that is. It's actually that this plant right here, the Sansevieria laurenti, is actually a hybrid of this, the Sansevieria trifasciata. In fact, its full name, which you don't see very often, is Sansevieria trifasciata laurenti. So now you probably know why you don't see its full name very often. So what is actually happening here is that it's returning to its original state. And I wanted to remind you that the snake plant is a wonderful plant to grow. They're about the most hardy plant that you can buy. They'll take full sun and you can grow them almost in a closet, but I wouldn't recommend that. And make sure you let them dry out thoroughly before you water them. Also, if you want to try rooting your own cuttings, I suspect that we may have a little bit better luck as you can see, this is rooted in a mulchy kind of soil. Now they may actually root faster in some perlite or vermiculite, which you can get at your garden center. They're, both perlite and vermiculite are a wonderful rooting medium and that should really, I suspect, get your plants rooting a little bit faster. So next plant I want to show you is from our show about summering plants outdoors. So watch this. Well, my mom didn't want this plant because it was all tangly and raggedy. What she did I do? You want to keep it for yourself? Yeah. Well, it is pretty grown out. It is looking a little bit 
on the straggly side. We know what I would do if I were you is we'll make cuttings out of this mm -hmm. and then they'll grow out and when they've got some roots on them you can start a whole new plant for yourself and it can grow big and beautiful. Okay. You want to try that? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I've got some a little jar down here and some water so we can get started. Okay. So we'll fill up this jar with water. Rooting cuttings in water is really easy. And then you just snip some of it back and stick it in the jar. And we'll take several cuttings actually so that you can start a nice big plant as soon as you get some roots on this. Okay. Do you have any other plants at home? Um, well, I don't think so. So this will be your first one? Yeah. Well, this is a nephthitis, is what it's called. And it's a real hardy plant. And it's a really good one to start out with. Okay. So I think you'll like it. We'll finish making some cuttings for you. And that'll do it. Okay. Here is the straggly and ugly plant that Megan described to you that she had on the show back in the summer. Well, what I did with it after the show was over, I decided to cut back the vines all the way to the edge of the pot and let it grow out. And this is the result. As you can see, the nephthitis has grown out really nicely. I'm keeping it now in a fairly low light location which will keep it from being as full as it could be. If you want to, you can give this some direct sun and it'll be even fuller than this. Although even like it is right now, I think it looks a whole lot better than it did then. And by the way, Megan told me that she took her cuttings home and they rooted really well and her mother potted them up with another plant that she already had at home. So they're doing fine. Now, if you're inspired to get an nephthitis, the care on them is to water when they're dry about a half inch down below the soil surface. If you have it in an eight inch pot like this is, and this is pretty standard, and you can go ahead and water it with up to a quart of water. Of course, I recommend fertilizing regularly. Now, if you do have a vining plant, their tendency is to end up getting straggly and ugly. It's just their nature, unless you keep them pruned fairly often. And I recommend cutting your vining plants back about every two months or so. If you don't, then you may end up with one like this philodendron I have here. See, it's now in a condition that is pretty straggly. And what I'm going to do with it is exactly what I did with this nephthitis over here. And I'll just get my scissors right here and we'll just cut this right back almost to the edge of the pot. Now another thing you may want to know when you go to do something like this is what kind of light was the plant in originally? Now this one happened to be growing in front of a window that had trees outside of it. So that during the summer its light was really drastically reduced. And one, some evidence of that, you can see right here are these small leaves. See how small the leaves have grown on it? And then look back here up near the top at the older leaves, as you can see, like look at this one here for example. These over here, they're nice and big. And I say that the result of low light is what happened here with these little tiny leaves. So what we're going to do is cut this one back and then I'm going to put it back in the window that it was in since the leaves are all gone for the winter. However, when summer comes around again, I can put it outside in the shade to keep it growing out nice and full. So not only do you want to prune back your plants, but notice the light that they're in and if you end up with the new leaves appearing smaller and smaller, then it may be that you need to put your plant in more light. So let's go ahead and we'll cut this back. Where you want to cut it is right above where a leaf meets the stem. I've showed you this before, but I'll show you again. And just do that all over the plant, as close to the edge of the pot as you can get. 
Now every one of these vines isn't going to be exactly to the edge of the pot, but it's going to be a lot shorter than it was before. And then with a little more light and some regular fertilizing, this one will grow out really nice and full. So what do you do after you take all these cuttings? Well, you can certainly root them in water and pot them up for yourself or for someone else. Today I'm going to give these cuttings to one of our crew members here who loves to play with plants also. So whatever you want to do with them. And I also want to take this time to remind you that your plants clean the air for you. And this philodendron here is an especially good specimen for that. So not only do plants beautify your home, but they do help you keep a nice, clean, healthy environment. Now the next plant that I'm going to show you is a plant that had a traumatic experience. So now we'll look at it. I want to tell you about the, how the other day when I was at the shopping mall, I ran into this Aglaonema Maria, more or less. It was sitting under a rock. Somebody had actually put a rock on top of this poor plant. It was a rock about this size, and they had taken it out of a planter box in the mall, and all you could see were little green things coming out of the ends of the rock. Well, I took the rock off the plant, and I took it home, and I watered it, and I brought it here to show you today just how sturdy the Aglaonema Maria really is. And as you can see, it does have some yellow leaves on it that are dried up, but for the most part, it really doesn't look too bad. And as evidence of that awful rock sitting on top of it, you can see its pots all broken and cracked. And I'll have to take this home and repot it really soon. The Aglaonema Maria is now living in my living room, so I don't think that any rocks will be falling on top of it again. Now, as you can see, it's really doing well. It's actually thriving. And I've removed all the old and ugly leaves that it had on it. And I've repotted it into a nice new fresh grower's pot. I do keep it in a nice brass container because I think that also beautifies the house as well as the plants. Now, you can see, if you look closely at this plant, the after effects of its trauma, it still has some scars. You can see some right there, and there are also some scars on this leaf, and over here too, this hole is also a result of the rock falling on it, or being put on it. And let's see, it, it actually has scars on several leaves here, and there's really nothing to do about that. It's just the way it is now, and its new leaves are very nice and healthy. They don't have any scars except for this one here. This actually, see how the, it's just got a few little holes right near the tip of the leaf. What happened here is this must have been all folded up, just a brand new leaf at the time that the rock was put on top of this plant so that the very tip actually got damaged and as it folded out, it's left this scar on it. And I do have one scar on here, though, that did not come from that traumatic experience. And that's this leaf over here. One day, my pet parrot decided to take a walk across the living room floor and to try out this leaf for lunch. Luckily, I caught him before he could do much damage. But this is the result of that. Now, one thing you can do if your leaves do get damaged for whatever reason is go ahead and trim them up. And what I like to do is trim them in the shape of the leaf itself so that when you look at the plant later, you don't even notice that it had a trimmed up leaf. See, something like that. As the other ones come to a point, then bring your clipped one also to a point. It's really just that easy and it helps keep your plant looking a little bit nicer. The Aglaonema, obviously, here is a super plant, very hardy, and if you decide to get one for yourself, what you need to do 
is you can keep it in either low light or a place where it gets a little bit of direct sun and then let the soil dry out somewhat about an inch to two inches below the soil surface and give it a good soak when it needs water. It's as easy as that and they are a super plant. Next up we have one of our previous guests and her plant. Hi Liz. Hi Ann. I was over at a friend's house the other day and he has this gorgeous tall plant and gave me these cuttings, but I don't know what to do with them. Can you help me? Sure. Thanks. <laughs> First of all, I want to tell you that what you've got here is a black cardinal philodendron. That's beautiful. And they get to quite large leaves mm -hmm. and they tend to grow pretty upright and tend to vine. Mm -hmm. So, what you can do is you can either root them in water, mm -hmm. like you are, yeah. or you can root them right in potting soil. That way they'll be used to being in soil immediately. They should take without any problem, and I can pot them up for you in just a few minutes. Oh, that'll be great. They'll save me the that? work of doing it later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's do that. Okay. So, what I've got here is a nice 8-inch clay pot mm -hmm. for them and a piece of osmunda bark that I'll put in the center okay. and that'll allow the plant you know, to grow up, give it something to hang on to, oh, which is something philodendrons really like to do. Uh -huh. So I'll get the potting soil mm -hmm. right here and we'll pour some in. All right. Yeah, just keep that in the center for me. Okay. And then if you want to help me pat it down kind of firmly in there. Okay. really that simple really and that quick wow. and then the next step I've got some root tone here mm-hmm and what you do you open it up it's a white powder it's actually a rooting powder and you take the plant you stick it right down in that powder and it's actually a hormone that'll help the plant root a little bit faster. Wow, it's like a growth hormone? Yeah, that's exactly right. Amazing. <laughs> Don't even have to go to the clinic for it. <laughs> so what you want to do then is to uh, take your finger and poke a hole down in the soil for mm -hmm. it and just push it in gently a few inches. Mm -hmm. You know, pat it around mm -hmm. and that's it. Wow. And I really think we look much more colorful today than we did then, don't you? Definitely, Liz. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you're here and you were able to bring the black cardinal philodendron with you. Mm -hmm. It looks great. Doesn't it's, it look good? It does. It's healthy. It's thriving. So what happened to the rest of it? Well, the sad fact is <laughs> that my family and I went away on vacation. And prior to leaving, we watered all of our plants thoroughly but it wasn't enough for the fresh cuttings in the soil and when we came back the other plants that we were trying to root in that pot had died however there was a shoot of the black cardinal that was still alive so we rescued it and stuck it in a jar of water until it rooted well and then we replanted it in some soil and as you can see it really took off and it, it's done wonderfully i've been really pleased with it it truly has um, oftentimes, when you're trying to root cuttings directly in soil, they do need to stay more on the moist side. Mm -hmm. And if they do dry out, that can be their demise. Yeah. So that is something to remember, although it sounds like you did your best here. And we've got this one mm -hmm. that's doing great. And philodendrons often root really well in water, as this is testimony to. Mm-hmm. Now, what kind of light are you keeping it in? Well, it's getting it's getting pretty pretty good light. Some of it is direct and some indirect. It's on a counter in between my dining room and kitchen, so it gets some direct light from a kitchen window and then some indirect from some sliding glass doors that we have in our dining room. So it's getting a fair amount of light. That's perfect, as you can see. And it looks to me like you've been fertilizing it, too. It's so robust. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I've tr been trying to fertilize my plants regularly. Uh-huh. Well, I think you're doing very well, and I consider this a success. I do, too. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. And you have another plant today with you also, one that you brought on our show about summering plants outdoors. Mm-hmm, I did. Yeah, and that one's really thriving. So we're going to take a look back and see how it's doing today. Okay. 
How are you today? Oh, I'm pretty good. I saw you were out here in your garden, so I took this opportunity to bring this plant over that I'm having some problems with. See if you might be able to give me a hand with it. All right. I noticed the other day when I was watering it that it's all sticky up here on the leaves, and then I looked, and on the table where it was sitting, it was all sticky all around. Do you know what might be the problem? Well, let me take a look here, but that okay. does sound suspicious. Oh, yeah, here they are. What you've got here is scale. Mm -hmm. You can see a little bit here. Ooh, yeah. And some, got one hiding down in here. Uh-huh. And I can see some down in the sides of the stems. Oh, yeah. Here also. Uh-huh. And that's an insect that'll eventually suck the juice out of your plant and kill it. Gross. So, what can we do about it? Well, we need to kill it first. Okay. <laughs> And this plant's really doing wonderfully. It's almost as tall as us now. I know. Can you believe it? From the little sprout that it was last time <laughs> we were looking at it together. I know. This is so great. Mm -hmm. It's done beautifully. I left it outside on the patio for the summer, like you had suggested. Mm -hmm. And then when it started cooling off, I brought it in. And I've had it in my dining room over in the corner where it's getting some indirect light. Oh, that's great. Now, have you noticed that it likes to grow towards the window? Oh, yes. I have to twirl it, it constantly because <laughs> it keeps listing towards the sliding glass doors there. So every time I water it, I give it a little turn so it'll try to keep itself evened out a little bit. Oh, that's great. That's perfect. That phenomenon is called phototropism, hmm. and a lot of plants do that. It's just their nature to want to go for the light. You sure. really can't blame them for that. No, <laughs> it seems perfectly reasonable thing for a plant to do. <laughs> now, this plant did have a scale problem. Mm -hmm. It yeah. did. So what's been happening since you've taken it home? Well, after we go. gave it that good washing, I have continually checked the undersides of the leaves and the stems, like you showed me, and I haven't had any problem with it. It has stayed nice and clean. You know, it really looks great. I don't see one scale on it. No, I have That's been fabulous. examining it thoroughly. Great. Mm -hmm. And look, it's even got this nice little baby shoot coming oh, up it down sure here. Does. Doesn't that well, look this great? Is, this is healthy. You must be watering it just right, too. Mm -hmm. It looks like, it just looks like a plant that's been watered mm -hmm. correctly. I've been letting it dry about an inch down, like Perfect. you said, before Perfect. I give it a good watering. It's a little moist today, but it looks quite happy. Mm -hmm. And I also suspect that you may miss these leaves, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but do you do that? Yes, I do. I do. I give it a good spritzing. I like to see it when they're nice and clean, and that helps to keep them clean, so I've been giving a good spritzing all around. Right, they also like that little bit of extra humidity, which can be difficult to get in the house. Oh, definitely. Although oftentimes, when people have Diefenbachia, that they've grown themselves and they've been in the house for quite a while, their nature seems to be to end up with all their leaves right at the top. Mm -hmm. But this one's very nice and full, almost all the way up and down. And I suspect that's from misting the leaves and good watering oh. habits. So I think you've done great. Well, thank you. Did you know this is called a dumb cane, too? No, I never heard that name. Oh, you haven't? Mm -mm. <laughs> it is called a dumb cane. The uh, theory here is that if you bite one of the leaves, it'll make your tongue swell up and then you can't speak. Hmm. So, uh, well, I bet I'm... we all know some people we'd like to try that on. <laughs> <laughs> I think that may be. That may be. But just for your information there. Hmm. So I think you're doing great. You're doing really well with your plants. Much better than you did before we got really got talking about them. And I'm really proud of you. Well, thanks. <laughs> but unfortunately, we've had one failure to go along with all of our successes. Well, that does happen sometimes. Oh, can I show did it you to bring you? It? Mm -hmm. yeah. OK, great. Let me just make some space here. Mm -hmm. OK. What have you got for me? Well, oh. this is a beautiful heart-shaped <laughs> ficus that I got for a oh. special occasion. And I was so careful with this because I know the ficus are very temperamental and I know they don't like to be moved and bumped. So I put it in one location where it was going to get good light and I was very careful to water it when it dried out and not let it get too dry. And then all of a sudden, one side's leaves started drying and dropping. And then a few weeks later, the other side's leaves started drying and dropping. And I'm 
most distraught and want to know what have I done to this poor plant? Okay, let me look at it a second here. Um, one thing I see right away is that the bark is a little bit loose. Right, I noticed that. If you pinch it, it seems like it's swelling out from the, the inside of the tree. Right, and that's a sign of disease. Oh no. Probably Phytophthora, which is fatal to ficus plants. Oh no. I'm afraid, <laughs> so I don't think this was your fault. Mm, oh well, I really don't. Fault. There's, uh, you know, once you get that disease, there's just no way oh. to really do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And you can tell if you have that disease. This is pretty dried up, so I can't yeah. really tell on this one. But if you have some parts that are still alive mm -hmm. and you snip off a part of the bark or, or stem and you smell it, you'll notice an ammonia type of odor. Huh. And that is a sure sign that you have Phytophthora. So don't blame yourself for this uh, one. Okay. I'm afraid. <laughs> one thing you could do with it, as I can see, is to clean off, clean it off, mm -hmm. and then maybe get an ivy, pot it in uh, some new, put it in some new soil with some ivy, and that'll take on the shape of this heart, and you can just have some heart-shaped ivy. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that the disease will spread to the ivy, so okay. it's worth a try. So just change the potting soil, repot it, take off some of these, and I can put some ivy with it, and the I, I can train the ivy to go up along the heart. Right. Exactly. Sounds great. Won't be a total loss then. Right. <laughs> and I don't have to feel guilty. I didn't kill it. No, it's not your fault. Oh, well, thank you, Liz. You're always full of good advice. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming on the show, it's Anne. It's been my pleasure, as I, always. Well, good. And you're doing great. Thank you for all your help. <laughs> you're welcome. I'm glad we had the opportunity today to look back at some of the plants from the past and see how they're doing today. And just like us, plants have their ups and downs. Any of us can learn how to grow happy, healthy house plants with the proper instruction, and that's why I'm here. So keep watching the indoor garden, and if you'd like to be a guest, or your plant would like to be a guest on the indoor garden, or even if you just have a question about one of your plants, then write to the indoor garden, P.O. Box, 5121 Arlington, Virginia 22205. Thanks for joining us and watch again.